well. Uh, that's uh, anyway. Morning, guys. Um, it's another, I suppose, another lazy Sunday drive. Start making a series of these lazy Sunday drive part episode one, two, three, four, five, etc. Baby. Um, <clears throat> Beautiful day today, so what are we getting? Middle of September. So well and truly getting into autumn. I think we've got we've got about one more week of heat, sort of remaining summer heat to go, and then that's pretty much it. We're pretty much done for pretty much done for summer. Even though we're in autumn now, I mean yeah, we still get that remaining heat for a little bit, but um, next week. Um, I think it's sort of 28s, 29s, and then it takes the week after it's a big plunge down to I think 15 degrees for a few days. So it's going to be a big change for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, beautiful day today. Um, I'm out of milk. I don't know. That's me. I always just run out of milk. I have a the small um, stop and shop in Mega Marsh downstairs, but. Um, I think I'll combine going out with going to grab a coffee. So I'll head to uh, head to Orhidea, uh, to the Starbucks there and grab a coffee. Like I said, as much as I don't really like Starbucks and I don't think they make the best coffee in the world, <coughs> they still um, they're always reliable. They're always open. Remember that bump? It always gets me every time. So yeah, for me this is leading into this is leading into perfect perfect weather. You know, I just love I love I love autumn here, um, and I also love spring. But autumn for me is great because it's leading into the month. Again, people call me crazy because I love winter. So autumn for me is leading into the month of the year that I actually really love. I love the cold, I love the snow. Um, so yeah, autumn things start to cool down a bit for me and that's the weather I like. I'm, I'm happy with 25 degrees a day. 22, 22 to 25 for me per day with sun. Tiny little bit of wind maybe, that's perfect weather for me. I had enough of those days where you're 35, 38, even up to 40 in Australia where you're just sweating and, you know, and it's not pleasurable and you can't sleep, you know, because you're sweating away. And I always say to people, you can, um, you can rug up in winter and make yourself nice and warm and cosy, but you can't carry an air conditioning unit around on your back, so... Anyway, we'll see how busy it is today here, but so I'm not going to do any shopping today. I just want to duck in, uh, grab a coffee. <clears throat> Most of the restaurants are back to normal now. I think I mentioned in a video the other day. So the terrace, the terraces have been open for a while, uh, but the full seating in restaurants um, only kicked off again last week. So you can go out now and grab a meal and sit in a restaurant again, which is good. So things are getting a little bit busier. So head up here. It's the usual Starbucks crowd, just sitting outside having a smoke. Hanging around. Oh, excellent. Just where I wanted to go. Something coming out. So let's see what I can find around here. 
Hopefully something around here. through here oh, oh squeeze 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 oh look at that absolute professional driving ladies and gentlemen hope you enjoyed it that's how you do it all right I'll just turn the camera off briefly while I go in and get my coffee so it's not running like it did when I went and got petrol I forgot to turn it off last time in that other video and I think it was about two or three minutes just staring at the road uh, until I got back so I'll turn this one off now and then I'll edit this um, I'm starting to edit the videos now like join a few together and make it more of a hobby I suppose maybe get serious about it at some stage and start putting other stuff in the edits but for now I'll just... all right I'm back I'm back and we're off Okay, so <clears throat> got my coffee. Happy with that. It was actually a nice coffee this morning, so I shouldn't put Starbucks down too much because they're always the default go-to place whenever you can't find a you know a cafe open or something that makes <clears throat> uh, stronger coffee. You know, you can always write on Starbucks. So yeah, it was good coffee this morning. It wasn't too bad actually, so I won't diss them too much more. But I'm thinking what I might do is I might head to um I might head to the part of town where Oh part of Bucharest where you would say I suppose the the other half live, you know, if you want to use that, that, en right. that English Turn reference to left. English reference to people that live better than others. <clears throat> There's certainly areas like that in every city in the world, obviously. So it's not just unique to it's not just unique to uh, Romania and Bucharest, but. What I think I might do is head towards. Um, I might head towards a part of town where. In 300 meters, turn left. Oh man, well, just let me turn her down a bit because she's getting on my nerves a little bit. So like I was saying, I just want to head to Turn left. Turn left. head to a part of town. Turn left and turn left. Well, I can't actually turn left here now because it's in Teziz. Turn left. But, I can. Turn left. but I can go left now. Wow, what is <laughs> this GPS is all over the place. Yeah. Turn left. Okay. What now? Turn left. Turn left. No, I'm not gonna forget that. <clears throat> you can recalibrate and uh, give me an alternate route. Back up. 
<clears throat> Sorry guys, I was just following the GPS, but um, it's sort of caught up a little bit. It's taken us into, obviously routes change and maps change and things like that, and it's not always gonna be 100% accurate. But most of the time it's pretty good. <clears throat> so for those that don't know I mean I know I know my way around Bucharest really well from public transport like um you know that's what I that's what I used to do till I started made the decision I've got to finally try and start driving um not because I really want to or need to I just wanted to if I ever if I ever you know friends turn up or, or do business or something then it's nice to be able to just have that in your you know be able to get a car and just say no problems I can go out and drive and I'm not worried about it So, like I was saying, it's just nice to be able to um, have the confidence to step out and jump in a car if I ever need to. Um, like, like I said, like for friends coming to visit, or because I had some friends that said they're going to come and visit, but uh, there are a couple that are meant to be here this Christmas actually, but um, because of COVID, turn left. But because of COVID, obviously things changed, and you know they couldn't they couldn't come along. And but hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully things start to work out and get a little bit better, and then uh, you know we can we'll see the place open up again. But yeah, that's why I wanted to. That's really why I wanted to start driving. So I've got that confidence to. Be able to jump in and do what I need to do. In 400 meters, turn left. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's still a work in progress, and um, you know, like now, you know, single lane here, two lanes coming the other way. It's broken lines. I can overtake if I want to, but it's Sunday. You know, I'm happy just having a drive around. I'm not in any rush. Sit behind the bus, you know. Why risk getting into an accident when I don't need to? So, where were we? Yep, getting out, driving, bit of experience, um, having the ability, like I said, to be able to just um, have the confidence to do it. Driven, you know, I've been driving since I was a kid, and you know, I've driven, driven all over the world and places that <clears throat> the traffic seems traffic seems far more scarier. I don't know how to explain it. Traffic seems far more scarier than here, but you don't feel that scared on the road. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a strange feeling. Here, I just don't feel, 
you're not at ease here as much as you you are in other places. That'll come. That'll come with time. Um, like I said I'm not going to. I'm not going to continue to say, "Oh, wow, this is bad," or "This is like this," or "That should have happened that way," because it's it's not productive. I mean, I've just got to. Plus, you get yourself worked up for nothing. You know, it's just got to learn to go with the flow and um, work it all out. And I'm sure eventually we'll be all good. Turn right. Okay, so this is one of these other places that <clears throat> when I was with Luciano, I think yesterday actually, when we came through here, it's a strange one because you, the two lanes to my left apparently are supposed to go straight. Yeah, straight and sort of up to the, uh, up to the left. These two lanes here are supposed to go right. But apparently what he's saying is, these guys on the left will also want to go right. So let's see if that happens, because from here, you know, I'm sort of meant to duck over. This lane sort of goes over to the far, uh, the curb on the far side, um, in order for me to go, go where I need to go, but we'll see. See, I didn't really get back to what I was saying about where I wanted to go today. I just thought I'd go drive around um, a little bit of the area where where it's a little bit more affluent. I suppose you know a lot of diplomats live there, and Turn left. come on, you fuck stick. See, like, like we were just saying, and it didn't quite work the way it should have worked because there were cars on my left that just decided again they're not going to go straight ahead. They wanted to go right as well. So I just don't. Un that's the one thing I still don't understand here that um, does yeah it confuses me and frustrates me a little bit. Like you know, those two lanes there clearly yeah, marked, right, right. and the two to my left clearly marked to go straight. So why would you get in a lane? that tells you to go straight when you decide you want to go right anyway. Um, and I know, I probably know the reason why. And the reason why is because they want to, they just want to go around the bend and line up with the lane that they want to line up with. So now we've got to, now we've got to have this drift See, and I don't, I don't, it's, it's not just me here, um, it's just not, it's just not me that doesn't quite get it here. I mean, uh, you can see there's like this guy in the Mercedes, the black Mercedes, he's the same. He got, he got confused as well and sort of just, you sort of just end up aiming at a lane and thinking, hope, you hope it's the right lane. Like these two here that were in that lane, they're now coming across in front of me. So they were sort of in the wrong lane as well. Um... But it's it's sort of really nobody's fault at the end of the day because the the lanes the way the lane markings um, here are they don't always line up from one side to the other and you can have this splitting lanes where it suddenly splits into from two lanes into five lanes or three lanes into five lanes and then on the other side of the road it goes back to normal so you've got to sort of aim you've got to sort of think geez you know which lane am I meant to be in.
about to get there. We'll get, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. So I'm going to stay on this inside lane because I think that's a good bet. That's, yeah, that's the other thing I'm really got to start. Uh, I've got to pay a lot of attention to. Like the GPS just said, at five in 500 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit. Well, this is not actually a roundabout. It's one of those ones that looks like a roundabout, but it's still an intersection. Yeah, sometimes you're concentrating so much on where you, what you're doing that you forget where you are. So it's pretty much where I'm heading. So this is um, over to my left is um, Rastrao Park, or it's now it's not now Rastro anymore. It's now called Mihele Regia Mihele Park, which is uh, one of the main ones. Regia Mihai. It's, yeah, it's now no, renamed after Regele Mihoi, after the king when he died. So it's always been Harastral Park, but it's now Regele Mihoi, the first park. Um, I had some guy argue with me on YouTube a few weeks ago saying, they don't name parks after dead kings, you know? And I said, well, it's not me that's, there is a park now, it is named uh, Regele Mihoi the first, you know? And um, so go and have a look at Google or go check the, municipal website um, I gave him a link as well so he went a bit quiet after that okay so this area around here is where we have a lot of uh, this is this is a more upmarket upmarket area so this whole street here the reason I'm coming here is this is where um, Nikolai and Elena Shapshescu's uh, home was their main home, which was down this street, um, or the palace. It's open for tours. You can actually go in and do tours, and it's just here on the left um, where these barriers are. Destination is on the right. Where these two cars are parked, and you'll see people lining up. Like this guy here is having a look at the prices and things. But yeah, so that that was his. Um, That was his mansion, or his house. So I've just done a U-turn to go past it. Um, and this whole street, this whole street was just, um, was closed to the public from what I've heard from people. You just, you couldn't drive down here. Um, one, because of the security concerns for Ceausescu, but that was just it, you know, this street was closed. You know, you didn't get down here unless you meant to be down here. And um, so now to it's a it's an upmarket area. So you got a lot of diplomats, diplomats that stay around here. Um, a lot of con yeah consular staff and things. There's some really nice restaurants around here. I mean, they are pretty. You know, they're pretty expensive in terms of the way restaurant prices go um, but that's comes with the territory so you can see all the guards standing here and all the guard boxes so every every one of these places is pretty much a diplomatic mansion or a diplomatic diplomats house um, and they either have 
private protective security or they will have um, Romanian police and that's their post to actually stand and guard all right so I'll head back I'll head back the way I came and just see how we see how we go <clears throat> see if I can start to get the hang of this a little bit more Like I said, that looks like a roundabout back there, so it's not actually a roundabout. And that's the one of the things you've got to get used to is because um, obviously in the dedicated roundabouts here, you've got to give way to your left, and the roundabout will indicate be indicated by the little blue discs uh, with the white triangles going around in a the white arrows, sorry, going around in a circle. Um, so you've got to be really conscious of which are which are roundabouts and which are not roundabouts. Um, otherwise you give way, you end up looking to the wrong side, giving way to the wrong side and potentially having an accident. And again, it's just me just being used to, just being used to Australia where what looks like a roundabout is normally a roundabout. It's round and it's, it's circular and it serves one purpose, but um, like I said here, there's a few really big ones here um, that even, as you heard, the GPS calls it a roundabout, um, but they're not. So you've got to be careful with those. And uh, those are the ones that I might actually come, might actually come a few times at night again, just to drive, drive around and get a, a feel for. <coughs> like not too bad today. Uh, not too bad today so far. I'm pretty happy with the performance so far and the way we're going. It hasn't been hasn't been terrible. Haven't really made any mistakes. Haven't cut anyone off. No beeping, no screaming at me, so that's a good sign. Just finished my coffee, so just finished the coffee, so the coffee is good. <clears throat> um, and again for people that are not Romanian that are watching this this is um, uh, back in Piazza Victoria so on the left over here you have the um, the office of the, gov or the government house um, where the Prime Minister sits as opposed to the president um, and this whole area here directly ahead of us is normally where you see the mass demonstrations that take place so they come in front of government house here and, and protest and I've been I've been to a couple over the last four years or so where the, you know this whole square here has just been absolutely packed you know and it's pretty amazing to be part of I think when was it two two years ago three years ago it was it was classed as the biggest demonstration since uh, 89 since uh, the revolution and then of course we had the one after that that turned a bit nasty with um, you know the police just turning on the crowd and using batons and tear gas and stuff you know um, but yeah this is normally the scene of it right right in front of us here Um, that was pretty painless so far. Gotta 
watch out for um, watch out in particular for pedestrian crossings along here <coughs> and cyclists and things they tend to they tend to just jump out on the crossings here and um, uh, particularly cyclists because there's a cyclist lane dedicated lane to the left here and it's normally very very busy um, so you will get a lot of uh, a lot of them are just use the crossings here on this street in particular which you've got to be careful of first came to um, when I got to Romania I stayed in a, a small rental apartment uh, just around the back of the Radisson Blue here in uh, Strada Luterana um, and, and you know that's started my progression and my gradual consolidation moving from then Okay, I'll go straight today. I was, we sort of turned right here yesterday, but I'll go straight here today just to have a look at... So on the left here, um, I mean, this is a very historic area because on the right, we've got the, what is now the Museum um, of Contemporary Art, um, but it's also used to be the regarded as the, president, uh, the, the Royal Palace. Um, and then to my left, uh, to the left, I think the camera can still see this without moving it too much. But on the left over here, you have the old um, Communist Party headquarters. So this is the famous square where the, the revolution in Bucharest took place at least, not in, obviously started in Timisoara and you know, spread, but this is where it took place in Bucharest. This square was packed with people. Ceausescu was on the balcony over there. Or Nikolai, I should say, because every time I say Ceausescu, people say Nikolai, call him Nikolai. So, given it's his first name, I suppose. So, so he was on the balcony over there expecting people, this mass crowd to be supporting him like they always did, you know, and cheering his name. And, um, and they turned, you know, everyone turned on him that day. It was historic day so that was just back there um, a lot of hardship around there because a lot of gun battles fought you know that's where the the people loyal to Nikolai hold themselves up so all the Securitate um, you know the Securitate were in a lot of the government buildings around uh, the square there and um, fought for fought for about a week before most of them gave themselves up um, it's all that classic footage of you know the people with the army um, and people and army together you know taking shelter behind armored vehicles and things that was all along here and around this area um, so look that that's the other thing I think I said that's the other thing I think I said endears me to this place um, is because people have had hard lives here, you know. People have got a little bit of everything now. There's people still that obviously do it really, really tough. And, uh, you know, the salaries are not the best here still. You know, I've got to be honest about that. And in comparison to the rest of the, rest of the EU, um, you know, some other countries that are still struggling as well, but... But yeah, um, that's the thing, like I said, that endears me to this place because people have had hardship and they understand what it is to have a hard life. Um, and I think that, I really think that makes a better quality of person. You know, when you haven't had things handed to you um, on a silver spoon and you don't have a, you know, a welfare state that looks after you when you're finding it hard like we do in Australia you know in Australia 
I mean, essentially, once you get a government house and you on unemployment benefits, you really don't have to work again if you don't want to, to be honest about it, you know. You're not a millionaire and you're not going to, it's not like you won't struggle, but the government really looks after you. And that's not the case here, so, you know, um, a lot of countries are like that. They don't have a welfare system that's that well supported. So essentially it's you don't work, you don't eat. Or if you don't have your own land to work the land and make your own produce and things to sell or to subsist off, then again, very, very difficult. So that's why, like I said, I really respect them. Um, the place and I think it, it brings out the good qualities in good qualities in people uh, I think it makes people more honest uh, that's just my opinion as well and the other thing I love look uh, like I said I've experienced a lot of places in the world and um, you know got friends from all over the world different cultures and things um, but one thing I, I, I do love about this place that we miss in other countries or it's disappearing in other countries is the sense of family. You know, the sense of family here is still huge. You know, you, your family is everything. You know, your family, everything revolves around your family and your friends. And um, But family first, then close friends. And, and for me, obviously, religion for me is a big one, you know. Not everyone's religious, so I'm not going to push it on anybody. But I just feel comfortable here too because it's a it's a religion very close to my own, and it's the kind of religion I want to practice too. So in my own right, you know. But like, I'll just leave the religion bit at that. That's all I need to say about it. Um, but that's why, yeah, that's why um, that's why I love the place so much. But and for for the Romanians out there listening to this, if you do listen and, and watch this, all I will say is I wish more Romanians didn't sell yourselves so short, meaning, you know, put the place down so much. And I've heard, you know, so many people are critical of, ah, oh, this is so bad and that's so bad. And well, I tell you what, it's not always rosier on the other side and, um, you know, far more developed countries have far more problems than you guys have here in terms of homelessness and uh, cost of living and um, cost of living here cost of living here is um, it's all relative you know but it is it is um, it is affordable if you know where to go and you know where to shop and you still got the alternatives whereas a lot of developed countries you don't you don't have those alternatives it's just the prices are what they are and you either take them or you know uh, you, you just got to run with the prices you know but so I, I, yeah, like I was saying, I just wish I just wish more Romanians would say, would understand that they actually have a beautiful country, and you have a lot of stuff here to be proud of, um, especially those uh, things I said, like your history, your identity as a country, um, the strength of the people, the family structure. You know, it's plus the obviously parts of the country that are so beautiful. You know, you've got everything, you've got beautiful wilderness to the north and natural, everything that's natural and, um, you know, fresh fruit and things are still relatively really nice here and, uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Um, and believe me, I, I'm coming from a position of, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a position of I suppose experience having traveled a lot and I know look there's a lot of Romanians that live overseas and travel as well but about, you know traveling not just through Europe but you know through the world through Southeast Asia through the Pacific um, so I think I think <coughs> I think I'm able to cast the learned opinion then because I have that exposure to different cultures and things and I understand
so yeah guys i hope you take that on board as a little bit of from you know from someone who's a who's a i suppose an out, outside i mean i am european we're all europeans you know, i was english by birth you know so europe is my home and um it's where i was born it's where my ancestors and family come from and romanian european we're all europeans you know so um but as an outsider in Romania, being not a Romanian, but now my home, I just hope a lot of you um, hear that from someone and just take a bit of, take a little bit of pride in the place and think, wow, you know, it's actually good to hear from someone that's, um, that's not from Romania. Sorry guys, I just, um, I, I often take this as a bit of a shortcut because it allows, oh great, allows me to get back the other way. Oh great, <laughs> now we've got the bloody truck coming as well. Plenty of room. You know, the reason I come this way is because it, I was going to say it allows me to take a shortcut back across the road. And then of course, as soon as you say that, you get two cars, a car and a truck coming the other way. But yeah, I normally, normally have to go right up to the roundabout and come back, but I do a little bit cheeky. Probably shouldn't, but it's Sunday. Like I said, it's not overly, overly overly busy so I have a quick look red cars gone right is clear okay so straight across the road and that allows me then to come back and park and hopefully we've still got a spot down here and uh, Should do. All right. I'll end the journey there, guys. Hopefully. I think this is going to be a marathon video, but hopefully people enjoy them and my little running commentary along the way. Like I said, once uh, once I get, you know, I'll start doing a few more of these and maybe out of Bucharest as well. So, you know, going up around the mountains and that again and, um, and just do car perspective. You know, maybe if people eventually want to see my, see my face and uh, <laughs> have a bit of that sort of stuff, but for now I'm just happy just recording what I see uh, through the eye of the camera and you know give my views and a little bit of chat along the way and hopefully it gives a different perspective on things for some people but all right I'll sign off there have a good weekend